Welcome. It is Sunday, September the 13th, as we gather together uh, virtually and in reality in our spirits, we gather together to worship God and to love and care for one another. That is the main purpose of being church, of being with one another. Uh, it's a theme that goes through our, our scriptures today about forgiveness and about what our purpose is here on earth. And I hope we can um, continue to share, share the mercy and love of God with everyone that we meet. call to worship. Bless God, O oh friends, with all our strength. Bless the holy name. Bless God, O oh friends, and never forget God's gifts. Bless God, O oh friends, with all our strength. Bless the holy name. Bless God, O oh friends, and never forget God's gifts. Forgiveness flowing into healing, tireless goodness and joy, strength and youth of the eagle's flight. Bless God, O oh friends, with all our strength. Bless the holy name. Bless God, O oh friends, and never forget God's gifts. Vindication, justice for all who are oppressed liberation from bondage and guidance for the way, unending mercy, steadfast love. Bless God, O oh friends, with all our strength, bless the holy name. Bless God, O oh friends, and never forget God's gifts. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's God's love toward those who are faithful and as a parent has compassion for their children so our God has compassion for us bless God O oh friends with all our strength bless the holy name bless God O oh friends and never forget God's gifts amen would you join me now as we come together for the prayers of the people? And we remember that, of course, we're not in the same room together, but that doesn't mean that we're not spiritually together because we are bound together. We're bound by our love for Jesus and by the strength that the Holy Spirit gives us. So I ask now that we just still our hearts and spend this moment in prayer together. And if you need prayer, during other times, please call the church office and the prayers will be forwarded to the prayer team 
or if you have a specific need during the week. You can also go to sjamcc.com on the deacons list where it says prayers of the people. And you can go through the prayers of the people that way. And they will be distributed to the prayer team. And we will pray over them just as we did when we were in the sanctuary by faith. So I ask now that we lift up the people that God has put on our hearts. And as we take a moment as a symbol of unity, let us place a hand over our hearts as we pray together for those whom we hold in our hearts and we ask God to hold in God's hand. You may say it out loud where you are. You may say it in your heart or your spirit. But we'll just take a moment now and share these needs together. Amen. Pray with me, please. Loving God, we are thankful for all the things that we can come to you with, that we can ask for your blessing. So today we just take a moment in all the turmoil that we're surrounded by and all the noises and all the issues and just pause and focus on who you are rather than all that's happening around us. We thank you, God, that you help us to thank you that we can see you at work in our lives, even in the midst, God, of turmoil, of violence, of discrimination, of oppression, and of pandemic. May we see you in the soft clouds that move in the bright blue sky. May we see you in the dance of the trees within the breeze. May we see you and hear you in the sounds of children laughing and in the eyes of one we love. Help us to remember that you have created us in your image and said that it is good. May we be instruments of peace to speak out, to be a voice for those whose voices seem not to be heard to have a heart of love when we feel surrounded by negativity, a discerning spirit to know truth from deception. Give us wisdom, O oh God, to live authentically and to be a presence for justice and acceptance for all. May we see you and the beauty you have surrounded us with, the people, the trees, the plants, the peaceful breezes, the rain, to bring new growth and the love of sharing a prayer. May we bring peace that passes all human understanding. May we bring joy unspeakable and full of your glory. May we bring hope to bind us together with you and with one another. May we bring love, your love, that never, ever fails into a world in which you have placed us. May we be respectful of others. May we understand that we need to wear a mask to be respectful of others, that we may need to distance ourselves when we just want to reach out and hug them. May we always be thankful, God, for all you have blessed us with, for what you are doing for and within us. We pray all these prayers because we know you've called us to answer, to pray and that you would answer. We pray all these prayers. We pray that it may be so for us, for our families, for our loved ones. May it be so May it be so, in the many names in which we know you by. Especially, may it be so, in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, our strength, 
our wisdom, our guidance. May it be so. And all the people say, Amen. The first reading today is from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 7 through 9 of the New International Version. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Here ends the reading. The Gospel for today is from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, from the New International Version. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a ruler who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. At the outset of the reckoning, one was brought who owed ten thousand bags of gold. Since the debtor was not able to pay, the ruler ordered that the debtor be sold along with family and possessions. At this, the servant fell down before the ruler, Be patient with me, and I will pay back everything. The ruler took pity and canceled the debt. But when that servant went out and found one of a fellow servants who owed a hundred silver coins, he grabbed her and began to choke her. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. So this fellow servant fell to her knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But the first servant refused, and said he went off and had her thrown into prison until she could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told the ruler everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, the ruler handed the servant over to the jailers to be tortured until the debt could be paid back. This is how your creator in heaven will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. The word of God for the people of God. Well, I'm constantly reminded of... Uh, the things I was taught as a young person. I had a, uh, I went to Catholic high school, so we had religion class every day. And the sophomore uh, rigid religion class I remember extremely well uh, was supposed to be about moral theology, about morality and doing right and wrong. And in every exam that we had uh, for that course, Somehow the question got asked, who, they used the word man, but that's what they had there, who, what is a human being? And the answer is, a human being is a social being. We are in relationship to one another and relationship to God. That's the whole meaning of everything that we do, is to be in relationship, to be in communion. The use of religious term, to be in communion with God and with one another. So I am uh, reminded of a, a poem uh, from an Anglican priest, you know, in the, in the 16th century, I think, named John Donne, and I want to you know, just read a part of it. Now, again, this is this is from the the time when when language was not as inclusified as it is today. And he writes, "No man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is less, as well as if the promontory were." 
as well as if a manner of thy friend or thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. This Part of this meaning is that to, to point out that we are all connected in very real ways with one another. That your joys are shared with me. And your suffering is shared with me. Just, just as in, in our first reading, you know, they talk about, you know, we live in Christ. In Christ we are joined together one to another. In Christ's love and care. But that's an overarching theme. I want, to, I want to get to the heart of our gospel reading today. When we are presented with, you know, Peter asking the question, how many times do I need to forgive somebody? Seven times? And, and he thought that was a big number. Boy, he was so generous. And, and Jesus comes back to him, and depending upon the tra translation that you have, you know, seven times seven. Seven times seventy, or in the case we have the day of seventy-seven times. In other words, you can't stop forgiving. Now, why is that? Why is it so important? Well, there's, there's really, I think there are two reasons. One, we we sort of get, because uh, we say it every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer, you know, God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, as we treat others, we are going to be treated ourselves by God in that prayer. So we are encouraged not only to, to realize that, that our fate is based, based together with the fate of others' humanity, and our forgiveness is based upon the forgiveness of other people. That's the, the parable that we have today of the servant who wouldn't forgive the other servant's sins and, and debts. So had to carry the burden, and, and I want to. And I want to let us think about that about a lot. You know, we think when we forgive, we do someone else a favor. Oh, I forgive you. The burden's lifted off of you now. The person may not have been carrying the burden, but you are. You are carrying the burden of feeling harmed, or maybe actually being harmed. You're carrying that burden, and you have to let it go. Now, it's not just as, as easy as saying, okay, I forgive you, forget it, it's all over. No, it's a process, a process that, that we need to go through to, to let it go. To allow God's grace to fill the, the hurt and the pain, and to work for the best of our sisters and brothers. You know, I want you to be treated justly, as I look to be treated justly too. So let us love one another. This is last week's reading, last Sunday's reading, it said, because love cannot harm the neighbor. Love can do no harm. And part of that, when harm has been done, is the need to, to fix it, to fix the hurt to fix the blame. And if we participate in Christ's love, in Christ's life, that's what we must do. We must allow resurrection to happen. Not just for our brothers and sisters, but for ourselves. The resurrection of letting go as many times as we need to. Now, that doesn't mean you allow people to hurt you and keep hurting you. No, no. As I tell people who are in a, a abusive relationships, the best thing you can do is get out because it's going to stop stop the other person from, from not just hurting you, but continue to live in that sin. So we need to love each other. And sometimes, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. And sometimes we don't understand it, but it's what we're called to do because we are called to be in Christ's life. To be not just in his life, but his life in us. So that Christ lives. Christ lives in this world today. Because the love of God lives in us and through us. May the Lord bless us and keep us. Amen.
You ask, how can I continue to make my contributions to St. John the Apostle, MCC? Well, you can write a check and mail it to the church, or you can go to the sjamcc.com website, click on the donate button, and make your contribution via PayPal. Well, good morning to everyone, and this is our opportunity as a church family to come together to celebrate communion with each other. And you know, one of the advantage of this type of communion is that um, you could have people join you who may not be willing to come to church every Sunday morning. So I invite you to invite whatever family members you have at your house or friends, or um, as long as you are doing safe distancing, wearing masks as appropriate, etc. But I invite you to invite these people so they have an opportunity to share communion as well. And to prepare for communion, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and get the elements that you'll need for communion, which will be something to represent the bread and something to represent the wine. So uh, please pause your video and when you come back, we'll get started. You know, St. John the Apostle, like all other metropolitan community churches around the globe, celebrates an open communion. That simply means that you do not need to be a member of this church or any church in order to participate in this meal. However, I do ask that you are prepared for this communion. So please join me in a few moments of silent meditation, confession, and or prayer. Amen. As your brother in Christ, I remind you that we are a love and forgiven people. Amen. God, you never promised us that the way would be clear. You have, however, created us in your image. The image of one who is wisdom, who is love, who is courage. You breathe your life into us with the assurance that we have within and around us everything we need to be your faithful people. Though we sometimes act in disregard for your call on our collective life, still you show up with and for us relentlessly. And so we join with all the saints who have gone before in gratitude for your abiding presence. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and presence, all that is is full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of love. Sacred is your presence, and blessed is Christ with us. Through the life of Jesus, we saw an example of what it means to navigate an uncertain path, practice creative ministry, and face with courage and compassion all the barriers that work against your spirit on the move. Jesus lived and breathe the ministry rooted in your love for all people. He prioritized the lives of those who are suffering 
and showed us what it looks like to be with and for one another, even under great distress. Though evil attempted to silence his proclamation of an all-inclusive kingdom of God, not even death could keep love from growing. On the night in which he was arrested, he gathered among friends for a meal. He took bread. He gave thanks over it. He blessed it. And then he broke it. And he shared it with his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of Christ with us and in assurance of your love persistent, we offer our lives, our ministries, and our church in the service of your healing work as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this community and these gifts. Make them a taste of your kingdom through Christ with us, that we might leave the table both nourished by your love and still hungry for justice for all your people. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts, O God. Make these ordinary elements into the sacred gift of your presence with us once again. May they awaken and anew to us to your everlasting invitation into the life of resurrection. Aliven us in our pursuit of a world where all needs are met. Power is balance, and the worth of every creature and creation is celebrated. In collective longing for a taste of your kingdom on earth, we join together in echoing the prayer of Jesus. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God, by the bread of heaven and the cup of life, 
you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit that we might live into your hopes for us, a community center in Christ and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care. May it be so. Amen. go forth to forgive as we have been forgiven seventy times seven feed of the paralyzing burden of sin in order to do justice to love mercy and to walk confidently and humbly with God may the Lord bless us amen Thank you.